Hey golf people, it seems there is a new golf ball at Costco and I wanted to try this thing out. So I've taken it on course here. I'm gonna walk you through how it performs and is it worth you spending your money? Now, so many golfers really aren't at the level where they should be spending 50 or $60 a dozen on balls. The gap between a good ball and a great ball these days has really narrowed significantly. There are so many good balls, direct to consumer balls or balls that you can buy that are on a budget that can compete with the Titleist Pro V1 or some of the best balls out there on the market. This ball might just be one of them. It's called the Callaway Hex Tour and it's sitting on the Costco shelves for $29.99 for two dozen. That's nearly a dollar a ball, very good value. But how does it perform? So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna walk you through a round of golf that I play with the Hex Tour. We'll see how it holds up, the performance, and of course, the value for money. In case you're wondering about the stats, the club head speed there 97, ball speed 139, my smash 1.43, which is pretty good. Estimated carry and roll 235. Didn't quite catch all of that one, but let's go find it. First initial impression of that ball is it felt decent. Not amazing, but decent. All right, our device was pretty accurate there. We're at 233. We probably got slowed down a little bit here in the rough. That's what we're faced with. I've got to keep it low under this tree. Let's see if we can do that. So for me, I'm looking for a ball that's going to react and check up a little bit around the greens. We've got to really be able to control distances. So we've got a little chip here. First one of the day to see how this thing does. What's nice about the dew in the morning here is we've got a really good idea of what this ball does. It landed basically right here, and I really had no checkup. It ran right out to here, leaving us about, ooh, what is that? 15 feet? So that's something I'm gonna have to adjust my game to. That thing really flew off the club, which that's nice but I was hoping for a little bit more checkup and just didn't get it there. Let's see if we can make up for that with a decent putt though. Ooh, that, that is so slow today. Super slow out here with the dew. <laughs> I didn't quite get the ball to the hole there. So we surrender an early bogey. We'll see if this gets a little bit better. Club head speed 99, ball speed 143, smash 1.45, estimated carry and roll 244. That one felt a little bit better. Definitely on center contact, there was a little better compression there. Let's go find where that thing ended up. So with those first two drives, I would say this one's somewhere in between a very hard distance ball and those really spinny Kirkland V2s, which I'd say are pretty soft at impact. Well guys, I've been searching everywhere for this ball and I think I just finally located it. <laughs> Literally, I've been walking around for three minutes. And uh, here it is. <laughs> this thing is deep. You're not gonna believe how far this thing went. Let me get my little measure shot out. Guys, that's the longest drive of the year, 296. The problem is, there it is. <laughs> we hit the cart path probably at least once or twice. How do balls always manage to find the cart path? It's beyond me. I am gonna change out balls though because I wanna really see how these things fly and stop on the greens and that mark is not gonna help things here for our test. Although I do wanna test the durability as well because I know that's really important to folks too. But we're only on the second hole. I'm gonna switch balls here. <laughs> we can get something accurate. Let's do it. All right guys, so we've got 100 yards here. Perfect distance for my 50 degree wedge. really good for distance there although it didn't check up like i would have hoped of course it is a wet dewy day that ball was in the rough all right two putt par there we are now on the third hole par three we've got 156. this ball claims to be a long ball and my eight irons generally about a 150 club but if i go after it probably 155. i'll see if i can really go after it and hit it 156 here and hopefully avoid that bunker on the left. Not sure if we're short, long, or right on, to be honest with you, the sun is kind of in my eyes, but I heard it sound like it was either bunker or green. 
it sounded like a green to me, but the bunker is also pretty compact and hard because it's wet out here. Now I gotta say these iron shots are feeling pretty good at impact and the results haven't been too far off from what I'd think yet. Oh no, that ball's up there. <laughs> yeah. I'm sitting at the green here. That's 156, seven, eight, nine, 10, one, two, three. I just hit that thing 163 guys. Pretty good for me with an eight iron. And that's what we're left with. Again, another 15 foot putt. Time to make it though. All right, another two putt par. So I'm showing you some different camera angles today, but it's not because I'm trying to be creative. It's because I actually forgot my tripod. <laughs> so I've got to get creative in terms of where I put the camera and how I place it so that it doesn't fall over as we're talking here. <laughs> Gotta say, that shot felt really good. So if we can do that, hit a 163 eight iron, we should be able to hit a 265 drive, something like that. Being that it's wet out here, let's say 260, I should be able to do that here with the Rogue. It's time we found a fairway, so no better time than right now. Similar to that first hole, again, didn't quite get the peak height I would like to see there. I would say just by eye, it is at least 20 feet lower than how I normally hit the ball in terms of ball flight with this driver. Great spot to be in the fairway, gotta say, nice and central, but definitely distance down there. We're at 2.30 exactly. I swung pretty good at that one. And there we go, straightaway shot in the fairway. Okay, we got 122 here, we're gonna go pitching wedge. So interestingly enough, these balls feel pretty good with my irons. And again, I'd still say with a driver, they're just not compressing the same and getting up in the air the same, but it does seem to be that way so far. So I'm a little perplexed, I gotta say. Okay, here's what we've got again, just a little bit past the pin. Here's where we hit. This is again, a pitching wedge. I hit here, it rolled down about six to seven feet here. Definitely saw a little spin on that ball though. Just missed that one now with a little less speed it might have been in. All right, now it's time to see if we can really connect with one on a drive. I haven't done that yet. Again, the iron play has been pretty solid, but drive-wise, just haven't seen the lift off. All right, again, that one felt better. I think I hit that in the middle, and I think my smash factor there was 1.49, so it was pretty well struck. But again, just not getting that peak height out of the driver. It looked good in the air, it was straight, just i'm losing yards because it's not getting up in the air as much all right walking up on it here now i will say this is into the wind but even into the wind 245 is about expected maybe 250 because the wind's not blowing that bad unfortunately we're at 223 here guys nice spot to be middle of the fairway gonna lay one up here on this long par five but uh yeah Distance-wise, just lacking a little bit. All right, we've got 102 here, slightly uphill. I'm gonna go ahead and hit my 50 degree wedge. Distance, I bet, was pretty good there, but uh, definitely pulled that one, which is fine for me, because I wanna chip a few more of these and see if we can start to control distance up and around the greens. Not a lot of green to work with here, probably about three paces to the hole. And again, whew, that ball's still rolling, it released a little bit too much. Hmm. We left ourselves a really long putt once again here to the hole. If I hit it, it was in. If I hit it, it was in. Well, another bogey there. So we are officially two over at this point. Haven't made any putts with these balls, but that's not the ball, it's the putter. <laughs> We've got a little dogleg par four coming up here. We'll see how this ball can work 
I'm gonna try to hit a bit of a fade here. That one had some nice bend to it. And again, low trajectory. This ball definitely a wind cheater. I do think it's probably better suited for a windier condition golf course. Clearly a Lynx course, something like that. But I would like to see it get up in the air a little better here in Florida where I'm not getting much roll. And I'd like to see it penetrate a little bit more. This video was sponsored by none other than me. And if you want to do me a favor here, and maybe you've watched a couple videos on this channel or maybe it's even your first time coming but you're enjoying the content please do hit the subscribe button it really does help we're trying to grow this channel to 100,000 subscribers in 2022 it's only possible if you hit subscribe right now all right we've got 139 and i'm going to challenge myself again normally i'm hitting eight iron here just to make sure we clear all the trouble but because this is a ball test, I wanna see if we can get the distance out of these balls that we need. I'm gonna go nine iron here and try to whack it. It's up there. Oh yeah, oh, it got there. It definitely got there. That was a good shot. So guys, I'm scratching my head here because my iron seemed to be going very nicely and the drivers just can't get those things up in the air. I'd say all around these balls are definitely not flying as high as my normal shots. On irons that's kind of helping me because it's keeping it there. I kept it under the wind a little bit. On the drives really seems to be hurting me though. That was close to a slam dunk. It hit right in here and it rolled up here. Now this is also uphill just to give you an idea and it rolled out 10 feet at least. So Stopping power of these balls, definitely not what I'd like to see personally, but again, depends on your game and I can certainly adjust accordingly. Yes, no. <laughs> we hadn't made a putt all day, so I start now, right? All right, we've got 180 here. We're gonna go eight iron. Pins at a tough spot to go at actually with the bunker there on the right precariously. A good shot here would actually be a little bit of a fade, and that's what I'm going to try to hit. That thing was long, actually. Well, guys, didn't expect to be long there. It was aimed pretty well. The direction was great there, but it went long. I'd love to be seeing that out of the drive, though, just not for some reason. All right, another chance to test out our chipping skills and see if we can master this thing. That was a tough shot, but I think we executed pretty well distance-wise there. Clubhead speed 98, ball speed 142, smash 1.45, estimated carry and roll 248. Let's find it. Now that ball got in the air a little bit better. And boy, look at all the gunk it picked up. So that also costed a little roll, but only 225 guys. And I hit that thing pretty well. 98 mile an hour club speed, I think it was. Dead center, exactly where I wanted to be. Great ball flight too, because this, this hole bends a little bit left, but distance just is not doing it for me. Just like on the PGA Tour, when they've got some muddy conditions, you're able to lift, clean, and replace. I'm doing that now, just so we get a fair test of this ball. On par five, I'm going three wood again. Okay, we're in position. It was low, but we're in position. All right, we got 119. We're gonna go smooth pitching wedge here. Oh man, that was good. Very good. I think we're gonna have maybe our first birdie of the day. Hopefully if I can make a putt. All right, that's looking like eh, eight feet. Tell you what, that thing did roll out pretty well again. And it rolled right past the edge of the cup. I don't know how that thing didn't go in, honestly. Yes, okay. Man, we were due to make one of those putts. All right, that gets us to, I believe, two over, which isn't too shabby, honestly. But still, the driver, I'm just not feeling like I'm getting it up in the air enough or getting the distance. We've got one more where I can really let loose here. We'll see if we can squeak out a 250 drive or something like that. Something reasonable would be nice. 
really felt like I got one up in the air for once. Club head speed 99, ball speed 146, smash 1.47. Estimated carry and roll 258, let's find it. Good news here, we are short of the bunker, well short. I thought it might be in the bunker because again, I thought this club would go further. We did squeak out a 240 drive with some mud on that ball as well. All in all though, just not getting the distance. You've heard me say it all day long. Okay, 50 degree wedge here, 105. It's up there. Great for distance all day with irons. I cannot fault it at all for that. I think, from what I can see here, this is a lower spinning ball, and so you're going to get that distance, but you're just not going to get that height with the driver, and that's why we're seeing this happen. With my irons, though, I cannot fault the distance. It's been really good and really accurate all day, and I've hit most of the greens here. Not too shabby. This one perfectly pin high again. And another makeable putt. I would love to end it. Pretty birdie. Let's try to do it. All right, guys, so final thoughts here. I think this is a pretty good ball for the price. Two dozen balls at $29.99. Absolutely good value there. I just shot plus two, and I probably could have been even par very easily if I could have putt today. Maybe even one under, but that's golf. Now, what I would say is if I've got the choice between this ball, two dozen at $29.99 on the shelf, at Costco, and I've got the Kirkland Signature V2 at two dozen for $27.99. I'm reaching for the Kirkland Signature all day long. It is, in my opinion, a better ball. It flies further. It's got a little bit more spin and feel around the greens. It's just fantastic. In fact, I've got a review to that ball right here. So if the shelves are bare, I might be going Callaway, but at Costco, the ball to play, I still think is the Kirkland Signature V2. Hope you enjoyed this one, guys. I'll catch you back here very soon on another edition of Let's Play Through.